after 1492, numerous black Americans, who were actually indigenous Americans, did not perish in the genocidal acts committed in America. Instead, many were transported and sold as slaves in other places. The commonly accepted tale of the slave trade is in fact a fabrication. The truth is that a large population of black Indians were forcefully shipped from America, not Africans, but American Indians, were shipped to various destinations. Throughout the colonization of North America, every European nation made use of Indian slaves for various purposes such as construction and plantations. These slaves were not only employed in the North American continent but were also in high demand in the outposts of the Caribbean. The report of the Industrial Commission on Agriculture and Agricultural Labor Volume 10 provides evidence, as it explicitly mentions. The large Negro population on the coast of South Carolina is quite different from this here described. The mayor of Beaufort says the town is remarkable for quiet and good order. For 20 years past, not a single individual has been killed or seriously injured in any disturbance within the corporate limits. That is the statement of the mayor of Beaufort. And Beaufort is perhaps the blackest spot in the whole South. That is to say, the Negro population predominate more there than anywhere else. There is a peculiar historical fact connected with that town that I would like to mention to the commission. That is the place where the federal troops first set the Negroes free. It was done on those islands in the neighborhood of Beaufort, and they are now there the predominant race, and this mayor refers to them as a quiet community. A most peculiar thing is this Quarteridges in his book on the human race asserts the fact that the African lived on these islands long before the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus. He is high authority, and he says that the Yamasi Indians were Negroes, what were known afterwards as the fiercest of the Indian tribes of the South. The well-known Yamasi Indians were Africans. End quote. Despite the common misconception that individuals with dark skin are of African descent, this claim is infrequently true. However, the notion persists and is often reiterated. In addition, the proponents of this fallacy persist in their assertion, stating that physical characteristics alone can determine a person's ethnicity, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Their declaration persists in the following manner. Question. By Mr. Phillips. Is it a fact that they were much darker than the other Indians? Answer. Yes, it is a fact. Question. And the hair was different too. Answer. So it is stated by one of the most distinguished ethnologists in the world. Another corroborative proof is that the Spaniards found that one Negro was equal to ten Indians for work, and they therefore imported these Indian Negroes and carried them to the West Indies to experiment with. End quote. Apart from their acknowledgement of performing experiments on the indigenous Americans, there are other troubling aspects to take into account. We can discuss the other troubling aspects at a later time, but for now, it's worth noting that the acknowledgement of performing experiments on native inhabitants is a significant issue that cannot be ignored. It is evident that the black Indian population existed on this land long before Christopher Columbus set foot in the Americas. However, one of their misperception being that they did not originate from Africa. In fact, they have always resided in this country. I'm Derek Hankerson and I'm with FirstCoast.TV. This morning, I'm with my cousin B and we're at Flagler College for the Yamasee Conference. B, good morning. Uh, can you explain to the non-natives what B stands for? Uh, B in our language, uh, which our language is the language of Hichiti. Um, a lot of the Mikosuki people speak a form of it right now, but B means head chief, um, and me being head chief of the Yamasi Indian Nation. Is the Yamasi Nation a federally recognized tribe? Well, that's a twofold question. And, um, sometimes people lack the understanding of federal recognition versus federal acknowledgement. Federal acknowledgement is what we do have, and federal acknowledgement comes from various forms, treaties, um, federal court orders, and or the process where you petition the Bureau of Indian Affairs to be actually recognized. Now, once you receive or you put forth a treaty and, you know, make sure that your tribe is a part of that treaty, and or you prove that you have a federal acknowledgement through court documentation, you can now use that in order to be federally recognized. We have federal acknowledgement through federal court documentation. Uh, and, it's, and it's nothing that we put on record or publicized through uh, online documentation and whatnot like that. But we do have federal acknowledgement through federal court system recognizing us as a legitimate tribe based on the standards of what a tribe is. How do we distinguish between the Creeks and the Yamasees? Well, that's, that's a very complicated but simple question, and it was posed yesterday at the conference. Uh, what was the distinction? And what we found is that we know historically there was no difference. The Yamasi were renamed the Creeks. The Creeks did not exist um, until after the Yamasi War of 1715. Um, if you get the book or you find yourself ever wanting to research a book, the invention of the Creek Nation identifies that inside of the documentation. It says that the name Creek was created for political uh, purpose, which would be basically land acquisition. Uh -huh. So um, I think 
to try and piece this thing together or the puzzle together for people will create a disruption of history. I think it would upset a lot of people because <laughs> you have a, a, a nation now called the Creek Nation that is federally recognized and people are like, well, why aren't the Yamasi recognized if they are actually the Creeks? Right. And, and some of that supporting factor was the Yamasi was the only tribal nation here in the Southeast that had an upper and lower chiefdom or confederacy. Right. Well, there was no upper or lower Creeks before there was an upper and lower Yamasi. Right. And so, you know, without going into detail, right. because this is, this is a very uh, controversial topic, right. um, without going into detail, I would just employ the viewers to, you know, do their own research exactly. and find out for themselves. And that's why it pays to tell the truth from the beginning. My last question is, why do academics assume all Yamasi have been extinct? <laughs> to be fair to the academics, I would not say that all academic scholars think the Yamasi were extinct. Because if they did, we wouldn't have a conference today. Good point. Um, this conference also outlined and entailed through factual documentation and proof through bloodlines, the continuation of Yamasi uh, clan members and grandmothers, and everything that they've had and presented here, that we were never extinct. That's the purpose of the first ever Yamasi conference, which also correlates with the 300 year anniversary of the Yamasi War of 1715. Um, the academic scholars that were um, centuries old, as we would like to say, let's go back in time. They had a unique purpose. They had a specific purpose to make the Yamasi extinct because we had a land settlement. We had a, a land agreement. We had one of the first reservations in the United States. It behooved them to say that these people who have given us problems for over you know, centuries now are dead. They're gone. Uh, it gives you right now to land, you know, gives you rights to the land. They needed to do that to disrupt the fabric of uh, the Native American population and also to encompass the land that they was trying to colonize. So after the Yamasi War, they had to have the Lord Proprietors feel comfortable about their investments, right. you know, coming from England and sending over their indentured right. servants, you know, servants right. to come here and then colonize the land. Right. It's sort of hard to say, I want you to invest in something in this new world, and you're saying, well, we have to worry about the savages, right. worry about those savages, you know, that, that just killed 400, you know, Charleston people and killed, you know, massacred all of our people. Right. Well, you know, the best way to do that was to write us out. Um, the Europeans have a saying that says, the pen is mightier than the sword. That's correct. And in this instant, it was. Right. Our people never had the need or want to write or read their documentation. Right. You know, we never cared about how they seen us. Right. Our whole purpose was for, for survival. That's right. You know, we cared about our children, That's our right. grandmothers, the same families. thing we are now. Exactly. And um, the whole writing this out was just that. But anyone that takes the time out, you know, without being ignorant, right. you actually take the time out and say, hey, you know, um, how did these people become extinct when you identifying them as Seminoles, right. or you identifying them as Mikosuki, right. or you identifying them as, as Yamasee Seminoles, or all the different names they give us? How, how is that an extinct race? Right. How do you say these people no longer exist when you say these other tribesmen married into their women and had babies by their women when every tribe in the Southeast had a matrilineal society? Right. So that meant that if you had a baby from a woman and she was of the Yamasi, then that baby was Yamasi. That's right. And so they have these things documented on Seminole records. Right. They have these things documented amongst the Mikosuki. Right. They have it documented amongst the Creeks. So, you know, when you say that, you know, again, the extinction, people that have a purpose will look past that. Right. People who have a purpose will say, oh, well, they're all African or they're, you know I mean, they're African-American. Right. Well, no, we're not. <laughs> We happen to be dark-skinned people, and actually, we're not even black. We're red-skinned. We're red-skinned. Exactly. We're red-skinned. Red 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 skin. yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? They, they say copper tone. Exactly. You know, it's red-skinned. It's red skins, Right. You know, and hence are. the big debate with the Washington Redskins. Some look at it as being offensive. Some look at it as being derogatory. But what most people don't know is prior to the British... Uh, immigrating to Virginia and Washington, who were there? Mm. The Redskins. The Redskins, and that's exactly right. You know, it, it, is, it is so pivotal it, that people really understand the, the literal meaning of things. Exactly. And what I mean by that is, when people see dark-skinned Indians, and if you, we're going to see co so come some cousins, the Mikosuki, yes. today, we're going down to Miami to see Leroy Osceola, yes. the traditional Mikosuki. Yes. When you see their ancestors, which are our, an our ancestors, yes. you look at us, you're looking at mirror images of us. Right. And so that is important because when you see modern day Mikosuki who have bred out a little bit right. or are breeding out right. gradually right. and right. they become lighter and lighter of skin. Right. Those with the truth will say, well, 
this is coming from the uh, raping of our women, right? The raping of our children, and their skin tone gets lighter, right? And I say that because you know it is is so. It becomes so controversial when people see people of our skin tone who are who are lighter or who are, darker, who are darker, exactly. And then they say, "Oh, they're, they're Africans." That is like saying all of the, the the lighter versions of Native Americans in the West are Mexicans. Exactly. They get called that. Sure. They get called that. It's ignorance. It is ignorance. It's sure ignorance. It's pure ignorance right. at, its, at its best. Right. Uh, and it's also a form of racism because the, it's a competition. Right. What is it that you don't want the right. dark-skinned Indians to achieve? Or exactly. You know what I mean? And you're, you're perpetuating the same type of mentality or ignorance. mental ignorance that your ancestors have, <laughs> right. have you know, were part to, that yeah. they had, you know, subjected themselves through and which what they were fighting about. You're exactly. doing the same thing. And and then we won't do, as Native Americans, we won't say, well, brother, you're, you're lighter than myself, and science has proven you're, you're, you're a mongoloid. Your ancestry is a mongoloid and that you come from Siberia. Right. You know, we won't do that. So we don't have to play that, that game. That's what, right. What we do is we embrace all people, but we ask that you truly get an understanding of Native American history, Native American documentation, there is nothing that we wrote about us. Right. Go back to if you know if you if you believe in you know the white man, then go back to his documentation and look at what he says because it only seems that our people believe what he says. Right. So it's documented who we are. It's documented what we've done. It's documented where we were. Well, that's they, right. And when they couldn't no longer document, us, they put census records. That's on right. Us. You know what I mean? They started right. putting the census to find out where we where, were. Where we were. And where then, are you? And then they wrote down Negro. Right. You know what I mean? But I asked everybody, where was a Negro on the continent? Name the country Negro. There is no country. Actually, it was a Spanish term for black. Plain and simple. So we were in Spain. Plain and simple. But you had a question. I apologize. No, what I was going to say is my cameraman, Jorge Rivera, had uh, two questions. And one question was, um, would you speak something in Yamasi? Would you say something in Yamasi for non-native speaking people? Yeah, yeah. Um, to you, your cameraman, to the people. Um, a rough translation is I am Siku Hidden Eagle. Um, Yamasi of the chief Arapaka Hajo. Sam Jones is what he's known and he lived in Mikosuke, Florida. Yes. Um, our people still exist yes. and we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be able to speak um, and, and clarify some records. Truthfully. Uh, truthfully, thank you. And the second question that he has is how do you think DNA testing has brought about I hate using the word evolution, but I will brought about the evolution of people actually knowing who they are and where they're from. Still not there. It hasn't. <laughs> DNA testing will say that somebody was back in the 1700s and they drew blood from a native and now they have blood that they can compare it to. That's not, that's not true. What they say is DNA testing allows us to know that your ancestors have been on this portion of the continent for so long because of genetic markers, because of the, the plants that here, the air that you breathe, because of this particular part of the continent's um, environmental makeup, okay? So they can trace where your people were versus where they were not. But the problem becomes with that, they've traced markers with everyone that says at one point in time we're all linked into what they call a African woman called Lulu Amalu. Every human being has the same genetic trait and makeup. Every human being can be traced back to one part of this world. And those are markers like the tree, our brothers and sisters the trees. When you go inside of a tree, they have rings. And the rings right. can tell you the how life. long that exactly. tree has lived right. and, and what it has endured. They can literally tell you if that tree encompassed a storm and what damage it did to it. Right. You know, they can tell you if smokestacks was around it and it had, you know, the carbon within the tree, you know, absorbed so much smokestack. So they can say, oh, at this particular time, this tree was around a fire. They're doing that now with DNA. And what they found within DNA is there is no genetic marker or makeup that says that you're Indian. There is no genetic marker that says you're Native American. All they can say is your people have been here for so long and that you have people that were here because of their genetic make marker or their genetic makeup. 
That makes sense. Well, thank you, cousin. Thank you. Shall I be a My previous statement is further supported by this evidence confirming the transportation of slaves to the Caribbean. The Caribbean is a subregion of the Americas that consists of the Caribbean Sea and its islands. The nearby coastal areas on the mainland may also be included. The region is southeast of the Gulf of Mexico and the North American mainland, east of Central America and north of South America. The West Indies is a subregion of North America, surrounded by the North Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, which comprises 13 independent island countries and 18 dependencies in three archipelagos, the Greater and Lesser Antilles, and the Lucan Archipelago. We possess additional evidence supporting the assertion that we are, indeed, the American Indian, as follows in the book by John Smith, The General History of Virginia, New England and the Summer Isles, together with The True Travels, Adventures and Observations, in a Sea Grammar, Volume 1. The statement is presented as follows, on page 123. Three more such like devils came rushing in with the like antique tricks, painted half black, half red, but all their eyes were painted white, and some red strokes like one hundred machados, along their cheeks, round about him, those fiends, danced a pretty while, and then came in three more as ugly as the rest, with red eyes and white strokes over their black faces. At last, they all sat down right against him. Despite his racist remark labeling them as devils and ugly, he explicitly mentions that their faces were black. As the narrative progresses to page 125, he proceeds with his argument and emphasizes this fact. Two days after, Powhutan, having disguised himself in the most fearful manner he could, caused Captain Smith to be brought forth to a great house in the woods, and thereupon a mat by the fire to be left alone. Not long after from behind a mat that divided the house was made the most dolefulest noise he ever heard, then Powhutan more like a devil than a man, with some two hundred more as black as himself, came unto him and told him now they were friends. In this passage, John Smith recounts that King Powhatan had two hundred individuals who were just as dark-skinned as he was. This suggests that not only was King Powhatan black, but also that his tribe shared the same physical characteristic. The book Old Panama and Castilla del Oro offers further evidence. On page 11, in the footnotes, March 30th, 1885, Poland was entirely consumed, with the exception of the buildings of the Panama Railroad, the French Canal Company, and the Pacific Mail Steamship Line. The loss was estimated at $6 million and 10,000 persons were left shelterless. This fire was started by Pedro Preston in a horde of dark-skinned insurgents at the outset of a so-called revolution. End quote. The revolution led by Pedro Preston will be addressed in the future. Nevertheless, the insurgents were described as having dark skin, and it becomes clear that these dark-skinned insurgents were in fact the indigenous people of South America, as we will discover in the following passage. The aboriginal people of the Bahamas, the Lucayans, discovered by Columbus, were a tall, graceful, dark-skinned race of barbarians. They were gentle and loving, quite unlike their cousins on the mainland, or their fierce neighbors to the south, the Caribs, who dwelt in the Lesser Antilles. They possessed pottery and stone implements, like Celts, arrowheads, mortars, and pestles, and were expert in the use of their canoes. Columbus well describes them, all of them go as naked as they came into the world, their forms are graceful, their features good, their hair as coarse as a horse's tail, cut short in front, and worn long upon their shoulders. They are dark of complexion, like the Canary Islanders, and paint themselves in various colors. End quote. The colonizers did not bring an excessive number of slaves to the Bahamas that would surpass their own population nor did they make any reference to such a possibility. In reality, they acknowledged that the indigenous dark-skinned population were related to the inhabitants of the neighboring islands and even the North American mainland. If you would like to express your encouragement towards these works and content, Please go to paypal.me slash sunoyi waiya yt, where you can even directly contribute through cash up at dollar sign sunoyi waiya. Any amount you give will be immensely appreciated. Thank you for your generosity.